In this video, I'll show you how to create this winter paper cutout scene in Inkscape. Let's start by grabbing the ellipse and arc tool, holding down the control key, and clicking and dragging to create a perfect circle. Now let's open up the fill and stroke dialog by going to object, fill and stroke. Let's give the circle a dark blue fill. Now let's click this button up here to apply a linear gradient, then grab the bottom stop in the list, raise the alpha channel all the way up, and make it a lighter blue. Alright, now back on the circle, we can grab the first stop here at the left of the gradient line, and drag it up to the top of the circle. Then we can grab the stop on the right and move it toward the center. Next, let's go to the selector tool, and let's right click the circle and choose Set Clip Group. With a clip group, anything that we create inside the group will automatically get clipped, so that only the parts inside the group will be visible. But first, we need to actually enter into the group. To do this, we right click the group and choose Enter Group. We can now see down here in the status bar that we're currently inside the group, which has a label starting with hashtag G. We want to stay inside this group until the end of the video. And now if we create an object, we can see that only the parts inside the group are visible. Alright, now we can delete this object, and let's start creating our winter scene. First, for a mountain, we can grab the pin tool and create a path with some jagged edges. And for the fill color, let's go with a very light blue. Now let's create another path covering some of the right side of the mountain. For the color of this one, I'll go with a darker and more desaturated blue. Okay, now we want to remove the part of this path that's extending beyond the lighter path. To do this, we can grab the selector tool Select both paths by selecting one, holding shift and clicking the other one. Then we can activate the shape builder tool here. Click this area and this area and press enter. Let's also add a white border to the top of the lighter part. For this, let's first duplicate the lighter path by right clicking it and choosing duplicate. And let's make it white. Then let's duplicate again. And let's make this one any other color so we'll be able to see it better. Then let's move it slightly down and to the right. Now if we hold down Shift and Alt and click somewhere inside this path, we can also select the white path. Then we can grab the Shape Builder tool again, click on this thin segment at the top, and press Enter. Alright, now to make the mountain look like a paper cutout, we'll need to give it a drop shadow. And we want to apply this shadow to the entire mountain as a whole, so we'll first need to group all of its parts together. To do this, we can select all of the parts, then right click and choose Group. Okay, now let's go up to the Filters menu, then down to Shadows and Glows, and choose Drop Shadow. For the settings, let's first go over to the Blur Color tab, and let's make the shadow color a dark blue. And let's also set the opacity to something like 30%. Alright, now let's go back to the Options tab, and we want the shadow to appear on the outside of the mountain. So we need to make sure the shadow type here is set to Outer. And let's go ahead and check Live Preview so we can see what's happening. Okay, so we mainly want the shadow to appear along the top right of the mountain. For this, we just need to use a positive value for the horizontal offset, and a negative value for the vertical offset. And now we can play around with the exact values of all three sliders until we get something we like. Okay, I think that looks pretty good, so I'll click the Apply button down here and close out of the dialog. Alright, now we can follow the same steps for another mountain. So first, let's grab the Pen tool and create a jagged path over here.
We can get this path the same fill color as the light blue path over here by grabbing the dropper tool and clicking the path. Okay, now let's use the pin tool to create another path covering the right side of this one. And let's use the dropper tool to choose the dark blue from the other mountain. Alright, now we can use the selector tool to select both paths. Grab the shape builder tool. Click this area and this area and press enter. Next, we can deselect everything. Duplicate the lighter path and make it white. Then we can duplicate again. Make it a different color. Move it down and to the right. Hold down Shift and Alt and click in here to also select the white path. Then activate the Shape Builder tool. Click this thin area and press Enter. Next, to give the mountain a drop shadow, let's group all of its parts together. Then let's go to Filters, Shadows and Glows, Drop Shadow. The same settings we used for the other mountain should work for this one as well, so we shouldn't have to change anything. Let's check live preview just to make sure. Yep, that looks pretty good, so we can apply it and close this out. Okay, next we'll add some hills to our scene. For this, let's go back to the pen tool, and this time we want to click and drag to create some curves. Let's use the dropper tool to get this one the same fill color as the lighter parts of the mountains. And like with the mountains, we'll add a white border along the top of the hill. So first, let's grab the selector tool and duplicate it. Then let's make it white. Duplicate it again. Change the color. And bring it down a bit. Now let's hold down Shift and Alt and click to also select the white path. Then use the Shape Builder tool to get just the top area. Right now, let's group these two paths together, then add a drop shadow to it. Let's go ahead and check live preview. That looks pretty good, but I'll make some slight adjustments. There we go. All right, now let's use the pen tool to draw another hill coming from the other side. Let's make this one white, then add a drop shadow. Okay, perfect. And if we want, we can grab the node tool and adjust the curves a bit. Okay, next we'll add some trees. For this, I like to go to the pen tool and change the shape setting up here to triangle in. With this, if we raise up the scale setting a bit, we can easily create triangular objects. And now if we turn this into a normal path by going to path, object to path, we can use the node tool to adjust the curves. Alright, now let's duplicate the path. Let's bring it up a bit. I'll make this one more narrow. Then I'll go to the node tool and bring up the bottom center node. Okay, let's duplicate again. Bring it up and make it more narrow. Now we can select all three paths. Then we can turn them into a single path by grabbing the Shape Builder tool, clicking and dragging over all of the segments, and pressing Enter. And now we have a nice Christmas tree. For the color, let's use the Dropper tool to choose the darker color of the mountains. Then let's give it a drop shadow. Because the tree is smaller than everything else, 
we will likely need to reduce the values of the settings. We can also go to the Blur Color tab and raise up the opacity a bit. Alright, now let's duplicate the tree. Move it somewhere else. And change up the size a bit. Then let's grab the dropper tool and let's choose a dark blue color from the sky gradient. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate this tree. Shrink it down a bit. Move it up here. And click this lower button up here a couple times to put it between the hill and the mountain. And I'll do the same with a duplicate of the lighter tree. Alright, I'll duplicate this one. Move it over here. Put it between both hills and adjust the size a bit. Then I'll do the same for the darker tree. Okay, next we can add in some falling snow. For this, let's grab the ellipse and arc tool and create a small circle up here. And let's make it white. Now let's give it a drop shadow. And again, we might have to make some adjustments. Okay, now we can add some duplicates of the circle across the entire scene. To do this easily, we can click and hold on the circle, and if we press the space bar, it will create a duplicate at the current location. Alright, now let's scale this one down a bit while holding down control to keep it proportional. Then let's create a bunch of duplicates of this one. Let's scale down one more time. And use this one to fill in most of the remaining empty space. Alright, and just for fun, we can add in a small bonfire down here. For this, let's go to the pen tool. And we want to make sure to set the shape setting back to none. Now let's create a path with a bunch of points. Now let's give it a reddish orange fill. Okay, now we can grab the node tool and drag the line segments to curve them. Next we can go back to the pen tool and create another pointy path inside this one. Let's make this one a brighter orange. Then curve the segments. Now let's create one more path inside this one. Make it brighter. And curve the segments. Okay, now we're going to add a drop shadow to each of the fire paths. So first we can select all three paths. Then open up the drop shadow dialog. This time we can change the color of the shadow to a dark orange. Now we can go to the options tab, check live preview, and make any necessary adjustments. Okay, let's go ahead and group the fire paths together so that we can easily adjust it. Alright, and for a final touch, 
we can add an inner drop shadow to the entire scene. To do this, let's click somewhere in here to select our original sky circle. Let's duplicate it. Now let's open up the drop shadow dialog. Let's change the color back to a dark blue. Okay, back in the options tab, for the shadow type, we want to choose one of the inner options. If we choose the normal inner option and check live preview, we can see that it puts the shadow in the right location, but we can't see any of the other objects in the scene. To fix this, we instead need to choose inner cutout. This hides all parts of the object except for the shadow. And now we can adjust the settings until we get something that looks good. Okay, our winter scene is finished, but now let's say we want to make some adjustments. At the moment though, we're only able to select the big inner drop shadow object that we just created. To fix this, we'll need to lock the object. To do this, we can open up the Layers and Objects dialog by going to Layer, Layers and Objects. And with the object selected, we can see it highlighted in the list here. And to lock it, we just need to click this lock icon here on the right. And now we're able to select the other objects and make adjustments. And finally, to get outside of the clip group, we can double click somewhere inside the canvas. And that's how we can create a winter paper cutout scene in Inkscape. Thanks for watching.